I want to begin by expressing to the Tong Kwa Chen First Nation and the Kwan Lam Dun First Nation our appreciation for hosting uh, this conference here in their traditional territory. And I also want to warmly welcome all of you here to the first ever Canadian Science Writers Conference held here in Yukon and indeed in the north. Uh, some special acknowledgments. Uh, unfortunately, Grand Chief Carville of the Council of Yukon First Nations cannot be with us this morning uh, due to uh, a death in the family. Uh, I want to uh, welcome Chief Ruth Massey from the Tonquachin First Nation, our Deputy Mayor, Janine Myrie, also uh, our President of Yukon College, Mr. Terry Woodinger. Good morning, Terry. And of course, the gentleman I just met, the President of this fine association, Mr. Tim Lawhee. And to all our visitors, a warm welcome to you, and I hope uh, you get some time while you're here to enjoy uh, some of this uh, beautiful landscape and indeed experience some of the magic of Yukon. It is very appropriate that uh, you're all here for this conference uh, at this time, given uh, we are in uh, a very important time. It's International Polar Year, and I think the North has much to offer uh, when it comes to research and other disciplines of science. We are experiencing uh, many impacts in, in the North today, and I think uh, your conference and the discussions you will have are a very important part of how we will uh, be able to learn and adapt and mitigate the challenges we face. Let me give you a couple of examples. Recently, in a place uh, north of Yukon known as Old Crow Flats, a sizable lake uh, just suddenly, uh, the majority of it suddenly disappeared. We are experiencing one of the largest spruce bark beetles, uh, beetle infestations, as I understand it, on the North American continent. We are experiencing migrating species, the thawing of ice caps, which, by the way, opens up another discipline of science for the paleontologists with their research. And Herschel Island has been listed uh, as one of Canada's 10 most endangered places by Heritage Canada. But with scientific knowledge and ongoing research, we here in Yukon believe that we can understand better and deal with the impacts better and, of course, as I said, find ways to mitigate. We have a long history here, ladies and gentlemen, of acquiring and communicating scientific knowledge. Yukon and Alaska were home to North Americans, or North America's earliest settlers. These peoples who crossed the Beringia Land Bridge from Siberia. The first peoples passed their knowledge down through generations using oral traditions. Traditional knowledge, as you all are probably aware, is valued not only by First Nations people, uh, but also by people trained in Western scientific processes. It gives us precious insights to help us determine our future by better understanding our past. The National Atlas indicates that, ecologically, Yukon is the most diverse jurisdiction in the country. We're blessed with unique opportunities for knowledge and research. Our ice fields are Canada's high altitude laboratory, the site of many years of medical research by McGill and NASA. The frozen land of Beringia preserves, at least for now, a priceless record of how environment has changed and how species have adapted. Today, institutional science in Yukon is flourishing. The Arctic Institute of North America's uh, Kowani Lake Field Research Station and Model Forest and Research Watershed are all part of the infrastructure that we are building. Then there are the te technical innovations developed in Yukon. Some examples are an ice field drills, ACR systems, and data loggers used on the space shuttle, R2000 building standard tests, and cold weather testing of wind turbine technology. These are some of the things that 
are ongoing in Yukon, and we feel very proud, especially when it comes to some of our uh, people that uh, very, in a very innovative manner have managed to uh, connect us, uh, not only just nationally, but globally. Yukon communities and First Nations are also actively engaged in scientific programs. For instance, the Montagwitchin First Nation is leading an international polar year project looking at changes in the Old Crow Flats region that I mentioned earlier. And in recognition of the significance of all this work, the Yukon government continues to enhance its scientific programs and support. We have move forward with a climate change strategy, climate change action plan, and an energy strategy, and we are now engaged with Yukoners to get their input. But we're also proposing to establish a research center of excellence here at our college precincts, with a focus on climate change adaptation that will initiate collaborative research, not just for Yukon, but for the country and the global community. Our future depends on knowledge that can only be acquired through scientific collabor collaboration, research, and development. That's why International Polar Year is so exciting for us. Together with First Nation, territorial, provincial, and federal governments, the Arctic Council, and others, we are building on this knowledge base and shaping a scientific legacy. So your role for us is critical, it's very important. For you, the science writers can help tell this story here in Canada and across the world. I invite you to engage in the most detail possible. And I offer you, once again, a warm, warm welcome from Yukon. Thank you all for being here. Good health and good luck. Benjak, Cho Yikli, Mangleb, Chief Rip Massey of Khan Kitchen Council, Uye. Good morning to all of you. It is indeed an honor and a pleasure to welcome you to the shared traditional territory of the Tong, Kitchen, and Kwangandan First Nations. I am both humbled and excited to be in the pres presence of such noble and professional people. I understand that I am in the presence of the modern day science world and all the science writers. Growing up in the Yukon and on our land, I too come from a science world. Mine is called traditional knowledge. At a very young age, we are taught how to live on our land and to acknowledge all of our surroundings at all times. All of our teachings are oral. We were taught many observations, but never told why they were that way or the importance to us. We just had to learn it. Thanks to many of you in the attendance today, we have bridged the gap of knowledge with your writings and many programs you have provided to us and the world. I have read and heard about many scientific facts or translations of what I have already learned from the land and my surroundings, and I would like to thank you for the explanations and the education you have provided in the plain English language. Although some of your science language is beyond my education level. Growing up in the Yukon, I too have witnessed many changes in our area due to climate change. Two weeks ago, I had the opportunity to hear Dr. David Suzuki speak on the subject of climate change, and he definitely shed some light on the many current observations of change. Science research is a wonderful tool. Personally, I think you have the most intriguing and important jobs investigating the world of science. Now you need the world to listen and learn from you. Good luck to you on that matter, and I mean that in a good way. Once again, I thank you for the opportunity to be among your very presence, and I wish you a successful week and a wonderful experience while you are visiting our traditional territory, and I hope to meet some of you throughout this conference. 
show me fun. thank you.